percentiles I'm particularly interested in for the purposes of calculating my upper bound and my lower bound for determining an outlier. So with these two pieces of information, I go to an Excel file because I've got a little formula for this, a little um, spreadsheet created for this. Now the formula uh, to calculate the upper and lower in the outlier labeling rule is not complicated. I don't know if you can actually see that very well, but basically it's the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile. quartile. So the difference, um, and then you multiply that by a factor, and that's called G. All right, and that's going to help us determine the lower and upper um, demarcation points for determining an outlier. Let me input this data and to, so that we can actually get a, a real feel for what I'm talking about. So 43.50 corresponds to the 25th percentile. So 43.5, I'll type that in, 43.5. And the upper, the cor upper quartile is 58.55. So I'll put that in here, 58.55. You don't need the median. I have the median there, but you don't have to input that for this uh, outlier labeling rule. And so the difference between Q3 and Q1 is equal to 15. Now I need to multiply that by a value, and it's called G in this context. And most people use 1.5. If you look on the internet and other uh, papers, people talk about using 1.5 as your multiplication file, your multiplier. So when I multiply 1.5 by 15, I get 23. All right. Now with that 23, I add that for the upper uh, limit, I add it to the third quartile. So 58.6 plus 23 equals 81.1. So my upper limit for an outlier on the right side of the distribution is going to be 81.1. Now do I have, are there any values equal to 81.1 or greater in the data? And the answer is, in this table here where I've got the high, highest Fifth, the five highest observations and the five lowest observations? The answer is yes. I've got two observations, one 84.9 and the other 89.2, that are greater than 81.1. All right, so I've, based on this outlier labeling rule and using G of 1.5, I've identified two outliers. Now, what about on the lower end of the spectrum of the distribution? And I'll just point out, the, that corresponds to two, these two values right here. They've been identified as outliers. Even though these data were generated so that under the pretense that there are no outliers. It's a normal distribution with no outliers. I know that going into the analysis, and yet this outlier labeling rule is telling me that there are two outliers on the upper side, and it's also telling me that there's an outlier on the lower side because my limit going on the left side of the distribution is 20.9. And when I look at uh, my lowest observations, I can see that I've got several, I've got three values that are lower than 20.9. Uh, in these data. So it's telling me that this value and these two values are outliers on that side. Now the reason why it's telling me that is because 1.5 is not the best number to use, even though it's very frequently uh, cited. Now what happened is, is that this book here, Explorator Exploratory Data Analysis, uh, published by Tukey in 1977, he was the first to propose the outlier labeling methodology. And he used uh, the 1.5 multiplier to help him uh, identify outliers, and he argued that we should use that. But in a subsequent publication by Hoagland, Eigelwitz, and Tukey, uh, so the same author from the first book, and they actually, this is the first publication that actually talked, that actually stated outlier labeling rule. Uh, Tukey didn't actually call it as such. He just used the method and suggested people can use it to identify outliers. In this paper, 
based on simulation research, they found that 1.5 as a multiplier too often, in fact I think it was 50% of the time, 